Hello and welcome to Easy Maths. In this video, we're going to focus attention on the area of multiplication of two matrices. In the last video, we looked at multiplication of a matrix by a scalar, and so we'll move on to the next bit today. And as always, please like, share, subscribe. I'll appreciate your support, even as I wish to grow my channel. Let's now turn to the lesson of the day. Now, multiplication of two matrices. Now, when you multiply matrices, you normally multiply a row of elements in the first matrix by a column of elements in the second matrix. To elaborate this, I'm going to use some two matrices, which I have before us here. We have the matrix A, B, C, D, and the matrix W, X, Y, Z. Please notice that the letters represent numbers. Now, as, as we just said, we multiply a row of elements in the first matrix by a column of elements in the second matrix. And so we have the first row, that is the first row A, B. The first row in the first matrix is multiplied by the first column of the first matrix, or second matrix rather, W, Y, to give us the element A, W plus B, Y. And how this is done, you do it this way. You multiply A times W, then plus B times Y. And if you solve this one, you're going to get an element, which is going to be the element in the first row, first column of the resulting matrix. Again, we move on to multiply the second row of the first matrix, that is C, D, by, again, the first column of the second matrix, which is W, Y. And that gives us the element C, W plus D, Y. We have C times W plus D times Y. Solving that will give us a number, which is the element in the second row or first column of the resulting matrix. And therefore, we just move on like that all the way. We'll always be multiplying a row in the first matrix by a column in the second matrix. We now move again to the first row of the first matrix with the second column of the second matrix, which gives us uh, the element AX plus BZ. We have A times X plus B times Z, and we have the element in the first row, second column of the resulting matrix. And lastly, we multiply the um, second row of um, the first matrix with the second column of the second matrix. That gives us the element CX plus DZ, and that gives us, if you solve that, you get the element in the second row, uh, second column of the resulting matrix. And basically, that's what multiplication of matrices is. Having said that, there's another point I need to make. We have just said that we multiply a row of elements in the first matrix by a column of elements in the second matrix. This time around, I want us to understand that this, after multiplying that, we normally add the elements, sorry, we normally add the elements multiplied in succession. To illustrate that, I'm going to use another example of a matrix, which is now, this time around, a two by three matrix multiplied by a three by three matrix, which are before us here. Again, please remember the letters A, B, C, D, E, F, and G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, and O all represent numbers. Now, of course, we said we multiply a row in the first with a column in the second. And therefore, we now multiply A, B, C with G, J, M, and that gives us the element A, G plus B, J plus C, M. This second point that the elements are multiplied and added in succession, I wanted to illustrate it this way. We have A times G giving us this figure here, plus B times J giving us this second figure here, then plus C times M giving us this number here, and we add all of those ones. And having added those ones, you're going to get the element in the first row of the first column of the resulting matrix. And that's what you're going to be doing all away, all, all along. Moving on to the second uh, column of the second matrix, we have A, B, C again multiplied by H, J, H, K, and N. That gives us the element A, H plus B, K plus C, N. Uh, please notice that we have A times H plus B times K and C times N. We add those ones there. We saw we get an element in the first row, second column of the resulting matrix. And lastly, on that particular row, we're going to multiply A, B, C with I, J, sorry, I, L, O. And that gives us the element that we have here, the last element on the first row of the resulting matrix. Again, we now move to D, E, F. This time round, we'll be multiplying the elements in the 
um, the second row of the first matrix, first of all, beginning with now the first column of the second matrix, and that gives us the element D, G, E, J, F, M. We add those ones in succession, having multiply. We have D times J, D times G, plus E times J, plus F times M. So that, that gives us a certain number here. This number is going to be the element which is going to be in the second row of the first column of the resulting matrix. We move on to the second element in the resulting matrix. That's going to be given by DEF multiplied by HKN. And that gives us the element that you have on your screen there. And lastly, of course, we're going to multiply DEF with ILO. And that gives us um, DI plus EL plus FO. So the order is um, that um, that way of multiplication is always maintained when multiplying two matrices. Please notice that you're multiplying a row of elements in the first by a column of elements in the second. And the elements are multiplied and then added in succession. I've repeated that a lot of times. Now, another thing we should also notice here is the fact that when we were multiplying here, we used a matrix of a two, that was a two by three, multiplied by a matrix of a three by three, and you got a resulting matrix of two by three. There are two comments I want to make about that, and this is the first comment. Please notice, if we are multiplying two matrices, which are of the orders R1 by C1, and the second matrix is R2 by C2, so one here represents the first matrix and the two here represents the second matrix. So we have the first one has order R1 C is of order R1 by C1, the second one is of order R2 by C2, then the first comment. These matrices are only compatible if C1 is equals to R2. Compatibility means uh, the matrices can be multiplied. So we are saying if the matrices will be possible to multiply, then we must have the value of C1 being equal to the value R2. And look at what we've just done in that last example here. We had three, which is now equivalent of our C1, and we, have, we also had three, which is equivalent of our R2. And obviously three equals to three. No wonder they were compatible. And so that's why it was possible to multiply the two matrices in the first place. That's the first point. For matrices to be compatible, the number of columns in the first must be equal to the number of rows in the second matrix. The last point, as we wind up the lesson, the resulting matrix, when you're multiplying two matrices of this order here, R1 by C1 multiplied by R2 by C2, the resulting matrix will be of order R1 by C2. And just to visualize it, we are having the first number here by the last number here. That is, the number of rows in the first matrix will be equal to the number of rows in the resulting matrix. The number of columns in the second matrix will be equal to the number of columns in the resulting matrix. That's, that therefore gives us um, the, the idea there. And what did we do in the last example? We got two, uh, two by three matrix multiplied by a three by three matrix. We got a matrix of order two by three. This one here, two by three. And that tells you something. When we are multiplying two matrices, the order of the resulting matrix will be uh, the number of rows will be equal to the number of rows of the first. The number of columns will be equal to the number of columns of the second matrix. And that brings me to the end of that particular lesson, uh, even as we move on now to examples to show how these things work out in, in actual questions. Hey, thank you. Uh, check out for more videos and please always like, share, subscribe. I'll appreciate it.